death threats. That's what a Colorado website designer has endured so far in her fight for free speech. Today, the Supreme Court hears her case, and the outcome could make an impact on b Christian businesses nationwide. Well, Lori Smith is challenging a Colorado anti-discrimination law. She's claiming that it forces her to violate her faith. Heather Sells reports on this pivotal case. Lori Smith says her religious beliefs do not allow her to create websites for same-sex weddings. Colorado says that is discrimination. The Supreme Court will now decide. I've always wanted to create custom artwork for weddings ever since I was a little girl. Smith left the corporate world to pursue her passion for creating designs for specific causes. Given her biblical beliefs, she hesitated to include weddings after seeing how the state penalized Jack Phillips for refusing to bake a wedding cake for a same-sex couple. I was cautious about continuing forward because I saw the way that the state of Colorado was treating other people of faith. In 2018, Phillips defended his religious views at the high court and won. The justices, however, ruled narrowly, saying hostile statements made by state officials toward him violated his free exercise of religion. Smith's case centers on the larger free speech question and the constitutionality of Colorado's anti-discrimination law. The state maintains wedding vendors must serve all ceremonies. Smith argues that violates her free speech. It's a really intrusive and a really dangerous thing to tell an artist, you have to create something, you have to speak. Religious freedom expert Lori Windham says this case is very important because protecting religious and political speech is the driving force behind the First Amendment. Colorado's stance, however, is that equal access in the marketplace is what's at stake. Lori Smith is fully free to choose what websites, uh, services she provides to whom, as long as she does not make the choice to open a business to serve the public. Once she makes a, a, that choice, then and only then, she is subject to Colorado's law and has to serve everybody equally. Smith's legal team disputes that. Colorado agrees that she serves everyone regardless of sexual orientation and she simply seeks to choose messages that are consistent with her beliefs. And her counsel says a win for Smith would be a victory for all beliefs and viewpoints. This belongs to the LGBT graphic designer who doesn't want to be forced by the government to criticize same-sex marriage. After six years of pursuing this case, Smith has endured severe backlash, including lost business and even death threats. Another reason religious freedom experts say this case matters. I think a win from the Supreme Court here sends a really strong message that even if somebody's religious beliefs are unpopular, that doesn't mean you get to silence them. In an era where hostility to people of faith is more common, this case could set clear markers about what is and is not allowed in the marketplace. Heather Sells, CBN News. Well, the Supreme Court has narrowed what they're going to consider. They're only going to consider the free speech aspects of this case. They're not going to take up, take this on freedom of religion, free exercise of religion. Uh, they're just, they're just not doing it. They're, they're doing it set solely on is this a limitation on free speech? And in that, they'll probably create uh, a landmark case. But we'll see this nationwide. What's happening in Colorado, uh, that there's a commission that's, that's tasked. This wasn't someone who went to her for website services. It's because she posted on her website, uh, I'm only going to do opposite sex um, uh, websites. I, I, I want to celebrate marriage. I want to celebrate traditional biblical marriage. Uh, and the commission saw that and then brought this against her saying, well, you can't do that. You can't open a business and then proclaim, I'm only going to do opposite sex couple, uh, couples. So this is a state action against a citizen uh, based on what she put on a website. And they're saying this is discrimination. Now, this could be nationwide in just a few days if President Biden signs into law the repeal of the Defense of Marriage Act 
and now there will be an equality on, under federal law uh, for same-sex couples. Now what happens to every wedding planner, uh, every wedding venue, uh, every um, cake provider in the nation? What we've seen with Jack Phillips is about to be written across the nation. And again, more and more litigation. It's going to be a floodgate of litigation. And the Supreme Court needs to decide, do we still have freedom of conscience in the United States? Can you say, I only want to do biblical marriage. I, I don't want to participate in these other ceremonies. Do you have the freedom to do that? In other news, the FBI is investigating strikes on North Carolina's power grid. The attacks have left tens of thousands in the cold and dark. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon. Schools in Moore County are closed, and as of this morning, more than 33,000 people are without power. It is the result of someone firing gunshots into equipment at two power substations Saturday night, and it could take days to repair the damage and restore power to all the customers. Authorities have declared a state of emergency, including a mandatory curfew from 9 at night to 5 in the morning. The sheriff would not confirm if it's a case of domestic terrorism. I can't answer that. Uh, we're Again, we're looking at all avenues. Uh, that's the reason I've got the professionals, the federal folks. Uh, they deal with the domestic terrorism more than locals. Uh, so they're on board and, and they're working with us uh, to, to determine exactly uh, who done this. There were concerns that the attack was related to protests against a local drag show held Saturday night. Officials say there's no evidence connecting the two. Well, early voting is breaking records in Georgia's U.S. Senate runoff election. On the last day of the campaign, incumbent Democrat Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican challenger Herschel Walker are trying to drive more voters to the polls. On Friday, the last day of early voting, nearly 353,000 people cast their ballots. The total number who voted early, whether in person or absentee, is more than 1.8 million. Both of those numbers breaking records set in previous runoff elections. Democrats are hoping to widen their majority in the Senate while a Republican win could weaken the Democratic agenda. However, Republicans will control the House in January, and they're vowing to investigate new revelations that Twitter colluded with the Democrats to suppress the Hunter Biden laptop story before the 2020 election. Meanwhile, both parties are condemning Donald Trump's call to set aside the Constitution so he can retake the Oval Office. The so-called Twitter files released by new CEO Elon Musk show that just days before the 2020 presidential election, the Biden campaign demanded that Twitter scrub information critical of Joe Biden and his son Hunter from the site. And it did. When the New York Post tweeted out its story about the contents of Hunter Biden's laptop, Twitter removed links and blocked those who tried to share it. It also locked the account of then White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany for tweeting about the story. The laptop, abandoned at a Delaware computer shop, contained emails allegedly showing influence peddling by then Vice President Joe Biden and possible crimes by Hunter. The New York Post reports that the FBI was also involved, warning Twitter to expect so-called hack and leak operations by state actors involving the Hunter Biden story in the weeks before the election. The ranking member of the House Oversight Committee, Representative James Comer, vows to hold Twitter employees and the Democrats accountable for censoring the story. The problem the Democrats should have is, why were they so scared of the laptop story? And that the answer is because the laptop proves evidence that not only did Joe Biden lie to the American people about his involvement with his family's influence peddling and shady business deals, it also proves that Joe Biden was a part of those shady business deals. And that's something every American should be concerned about. The Twitter revelations led former President Donald Trump to demand a new election or be declared the rightful winner, even if it's not allowed in the Constitution. Trump said... A massive fraud of this type and magnitude allows for the termination of all rules, regulations, and articles, even those found in the Constitution. Our great founders did not want and would not condone false and fraudulent elections. The White House said Trump should be universally condemned for the statement, and some Republicans distanced themselves from Trump. This is atrocious, having anyone that would make statements 
uh, like that. Well, obviously, I don't support that. Uh, the Constitution is set for a reason. Uh, to protect the rights uh, of every American. The Twitter files have rekindled charges that political censorship by big tech helped Joe Biden win the 2020 election and have fueled House Republicans' plans to investigate it. Dale Hurd, CBN News. Thanks, Dale. Gordon, I get the sense that the next couple of years with Republican or divided control is going to be a bumpy ride. Well, I think you're right. I think we're up for a very, very interesting time with lots of investigations coming out of Congress, uh, even more so than there have been over the past uh, six years. It's absolutely incredible uh, how Congress seems to be abusing their investigation power. They, their power to investigate should always lead to legislation, and in and, and the current ones, I'm not seeing that. It seems to be a, a leading to more campaign fodder, and we're always into some kind of campaigning. Now, what's on Hunter Biden's laptop is a different matter, that if a sitting vice president, because uh, that's what Joe Biden was when this happened in China and Ukraine, if a sitting vice president is somehow using their position to benefit a family member, well, then that is something that every American needs to know and every American needs to consider as you're, as you're casting your ballot. Uh, do you want this guy to be in office again? Uh, so that's going to be a, a key issue come 2024. Now that it's out in the open, uh, I can expect the Republicans to campaign very hard on it and really pursue investigations at Congress in order to do that. At the same time, this is no excuse to throw out the Constitution. Uh, we're, we're all used to newspapers having political views, uh, the New York Times actively campaigning, uh, creating a story about bounties for soldiers in Afghanistan. And then it, after the election, it turns out, well, that story's not true. So uh, Washington Post, New York Times, we're used to them campaigning. Uh, we're not used to big tech, and, and, and now we're, we're finding Twitter actively involved in the Biden campaign. Facebook, we knew, actively involved to hundreds of millions of dollars uh, being donated for get out the vote efforts. So uh, as, as an electorate, the issue is, are you informed? Uh, do you know that your information is being throttled? Do you know that uh, your feeds are being manipulated? And if so, does that give you enough information to say, well, maybe there's another side? Uh, that's all part of a free democracy. That's all part of the uh, give and take of politics. Uh, politics seems to be now a blood sport as opposed to a uh, um, contest with rules. So uh, we're in for it, and we're in for it for the next two years. But I have to underline, none of this means you get to throw out the Constitution. And when the states certify their electors, well, then it's game over, and it's time to look to the next election. When disaster strikes, it came fast. If we'd waited too much longer, we probably wouldn't have made it out. The water got up on my house to here. The most vulnerable have nowhere to turn. Nothing. A brick wall. That's all I have. You can provide critical aid and hope to those who have lost everything. Your donation of $20 will help rush emergency relief to disaster zones all across America. I've never seen anything like this. The community's been turned upside down. When you see the devastation around you, it really grips you. It grips you really hard. My first thought was how? How are we gonna clean this? Your donation to CBN's Operation Blessing will help rush critical aid like fresh water, cleaning supplies, meal kits, and more to areas devastated by natural disasters. Give today, call now, or go to obdisaster.com. A triple-demic of COVID, flu, and respiratory illness is now on the rise. One way you can fight it, get plenty of sleep. Research shows people who don't get enough sleep are four times more likely to catch a cold than people exposed to the same virus who do get ample sleep. Here's medical reporter Lori Johnson with some tips on how to get a good night's rest. Scientific evidence shows that how much we sleep directly relates to our immune system function. 
getting plenty of Zs helps repair just about every system within our bodies. When people get the sleep they need, kind of they're more productive, they're more creative, they are better partners, they're better parents, they're more empathetic, and their health is, is, is much better off, both our mental health as well as our physical health. Most adults need about eight hours a night to feel refreshed and ready for the next day. And on the shorter end, like when we get less than five hours, that is certainly um, kind of a risk factor for lots of negative health outcomes. Anxiety often creates a barrier to sleep. People who struggle with this should consider preparing for bedtime a full two hours before lights out. That means moving from work, news, and electronics to something more calming, familiar, and pleasant. Oftentimes, people treat themselves like their computers, that you can just kind of flip the off switch and then kind of go to sleep. And that's just not how the body works. Setting your alarm clock so that you wake up at the same time every day, even on the weekends, is a useful tip to help gain control over when our body naturally gets sleepy, also known as circadian rhythm. One of the things that happens with insomnia uh, is that people try to kind of adjust their wake time based on how their night was, right? So like they have a bad night of sleep and they'll sleep in an extra two hours. But what that does is it kind of throws the whole system off. It actually kind of puts you in jet lag without having any of the benefits of traveling. If you often toss and turn in the middle of the night, try getting up and moving to a different location like the couch. That can help your brain not associate anxiety with your bed, something called conditioned arousal. So, you know, you, 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 know, you have your angstiness and your bed and you need to break those apart and wait until you get sleepy again. So you don't want to turn on all the lights. You don't want to do anything really active. You want to go back to those relaxing things that are known to kind of bring on that sleepiness for you. And when you begin to feel sleepy again, you kind of repair that relationship so that, you know, over time, when you get back in bed, you know, th the bed does what it's supposed to do is cue you to fall asleep. Exercise during the day tends to help us sleep well. So does a dark room that's a cool 65 degrees. On the other hand, things that can get in the way include caffeine and alcohol, which can suppress important dreaming or REM sleep. The other thing that alcohol does is it, it's, it's relaxing, right? It hits on those receptors in our brain that make us feel relaxed, um, but it wears off. And when it wears off, your brain notices, and that also leads to more awakening. Also, try to avoid sleep medications and other aids. Even if many of them are not physiologically addicting, they become almost immediately psychologically addicting, right? We, we, we start to wonder, can we sleep without these? And so it's, it's a slippery slope to go down. So while regularly getting a good night's sleep may require some effort, it could be worth it when you consider the many health benefits. Gordon. Well, Lori, what should people do before they go to bed to help them fall asleep? Well, there are two categories. One is physical and the other is mental. So when you talk about physical things that you should do, you should have a cold room, a dark room, a quiet room, or one, you know, with one of those white noise machines that helps a lot of people. You should have a good mattress. You should have exercise during the day and avoid caffeine and alcohol. But when it comes to the mental things, you want to have a calm state of mind. So don't argue with someone right before bed. Don't get all upset watching the news. Don't even read a book that's a thriller and you can't put it down. And you know, believe it or not, health experts, sleep experts say the number one barrier to falling asleep or to getting back to sleep if we wake up in the middle of the night is something called rumination, where we turn the same thought over and over and over again in our mind, like clothes in a dryer. And one of the best ways to break that cycle is to write down during the day the things that you're concerned about, worried about, and possible solutions to that. So set aside about 15 minutes during the day to think about those things so that you don't do it in the middle of the night, Gordon. Well, during your piece, you recommended, the, well, the expert recommended two hours before bedtime, which I, I've got to tell you, I'm, that, <laughs> that would really change my life. Um, uh, is, is that really the time that you need to wind down? 
Well, I'm really glad you pointed that out because he's like, hey, I'm not the fun police. You know, if you don't have a problem with uh, sleep, you can do whatever you want. My 28 year old son drinks a giant glass of coffee and he can fall right to sleep. And so, you know, if you don't have problems, if you can watch the news and go straight to sleep, that's fine. And if, if you can do if you can wake up at 530 one morning and, uh, and then 11 o'clock the next morning and you don't have a problem with your sleep, continue doing it. So you don't really need to do these things unless you have problems sleeping. And he said the first thing he tells uh, people who have problems sleeping is have that same sleep, that same wake up time every day, seven days a week, and start winding down two hours before lights out if you have problems. Oh, the, the piece mentioned also that you need eight hours of sleep a night. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm probably averaging around seven. So uh, do I need to take a reset and look, look at extending that? Another great question, because a lot of people have anxiety if they're not getting eight hours a night. You want to feel refreshed and rested the next day. That's really the key. It's, it's not so much the number, but how you feel the next day. So for most people, it's eight hours up, you know, in our age range. But listen, Gordon, this is really important. Kids are not getting enough sleep. The younger you are, the more sleep you need. For example, uh, toddlers need between 11 and 14 hours a night. But here's where it gets really dangerous, teenagers. Teenagers need between eight and 10 hours a night, and they're not getting anywhere near that. And so we're also seeing you know, all kinds of mental health problems with teenagers, and these things are oftentimes linked. So uh, one great way to help teens, you know, this is what's causing the teens to stay up too late are these phones. So take the phone away from your teenager, and the first thing they're gonna say is, but I need my phone to wake up. Buy them an old-fashioned alarm clock, so that alarm clock will wake them up. But they need to st stop staying up till two o'clock in the morning on these things right here. Also, school-age children between the ages of six and thirteen need between nine and eleven hours a night. So that's a lot too. A lot of those kids aren't getting the sleep they need. Well, good luck getting the smartphone out of a teenager's hands. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure you're going to be successful with that. Hey, the parents have the authority. We, re we need to remember that. Uh, you, you have a different arrangement with teenagers than I did. Um, I, back to um, sleep. If, if you're an adult and you're putting your smartphone away, and you're doing all the right adult things, and, and you're trying to protect your sleep, and, and you're not getting it, how important is it to go to a sleep doctor and get a sleep study? Very important, and so there are very there are a lot of medical centers that offer that, and you know you can sort of drill down into what in particular is causing your situation. A lot of times, people don't feel refreshed and re-energized the next day because they are suffering from sleep apnea, and uh, there are some a lot of great advances regarding the CPAP machine. It, it doesn't it's not the old-fashioned one uh, that a lot of people struggled with before. So it's a great it's a great point, Gordon. If you you really are trying your best and you're not having success, definitely go to a sleep specialist. All right, Lori, thanks for the report and good luck with laying down the law with the teenagers. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, we have a free Protect Your Sleep DVD and we also have a free booklet. If you're having trouble getting a great night's sleep, we want you to learn how to get a great night's sleep. Stop insomnia, relieve pain, protect against sleep apnea, and the entire five-part ser series is absolutely free. All you have to do is call and ask for it. So call 1-800-700-7000 or visit CBN.com and say, I want to get Protect Your Sleep. Uh, we've got a DVD and the booklet. And again, it's absolutely free. We want to help your health. And if you're having trouble sleeping, this will be a great resource for you to look through the latest in medical advice on how to get a good night's sleep. Well, we have a special holiday mailing for you. Inside, you'll find two Christmas ornament cards. On the back of one is a place for you to write down your prayer request and then return it in the envelope provided. So we'll be praying for you this Christmas season. Well, we put the ornaments on our Christmas trees on campus here, and we're praying for your prayer requests as you send them in. The second ornament is for you to hang in your home to remind you that we're praying for you and to remind you to pray for what you're praying for. Uh, we believe in prevailing prayer, and these reminders are a great, great way to do it. So if you'd like 
for us to pray for you and you don't have the mailer, all you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. We'll take your prayer request and send you your ornaments. And we look forward to praying for you and your family this Christmas season. Well, as a former NFL safety, Doug Middleton was his team's last line of defense. Now his goal isn't just to stop touchdowns. It's to end America's mental health crisis. Doug made this his mission after the shocking death of his best friend. When I heard that, I was in shock. Like, I just, I just couldn't believe it because it's like I just talked to my best friend the day before. Like, you know, there's no way that he, he took his own life. From 2016 to 2021, Doug Middleton lived his dream of playing in the NFL. His love of football began as a six-year-old growing up in North Carolina. For Doug, life was all about football and friends. As a six-year-old kid, there was nothing that could compare to scoring touchdowns with your friends or making interceptions or, or making tackles. There was nothing in life that was, that was like that. One friend in particular was like family. Me and AJ played ball together um, all the way from, from pretty much eight years old all the way through high school. Our friendship really just started with just, just two young kids trying to play sports together. Doug and AJ were star athletes and both accepted football scholarships. AJ at Fayetteville State and Doug at Appalachian State University. During those times, we took two different paths, but at the same time, we remained very close and, and uh, we shared in each other's journey as we tried to figure out life. In 2011, Doug's freshman year, he gave his life to Jesus. I was able to put my faith in Jesus Christ and, and Christianity, and uh, that's what ended up changing my life because no matter how things have gone, you know, whether they go south or whether they go right, um, I know that at the end of the day, um, it may not be my plan, but it's gonna be God's plan. Doug excelled at App State. As a junior, he was named to the all-conference team, and in 2016, he signed with the New York Jets. Unfortunately, as Doug was thriving, AJ was struggling. Once AJ got done at Fayetteville State, that's when a lot of the adversity started to really happen in his life. And, and uh, when those experiences really started to alter, um, you know, his view on life. And uh, he just uh, slipped into a deep state of depression and, and really couldn't get out of it. Uh, he didn't want to take a shower. He didn't want to go eat. He didn't want to leave the house. In July 2017, Doug received a call that changed his life. My wife was with, was with me, and uh, we got a call from uh, my dad. He didn't call my phone, he called her phone, and um, he had let her know that um, AJ had just took his own life. When I heard that, I was in shock. You know, I sat there for a few hours, and then uh, it started to really hit me, and I started to cry. Still mourning, Doug headed to training camp with the Jets. During the first preseason game, he suffered a season-ending injury. It was this if life just really hit me because now um, I had lost a game that I love. I lost pretty much my brother who, who I've, I've overcome any and everything with and, and been through any and everything with. Um, both of my outlets were gone and, and it all happened within one month. And so I really, uh, you know, struggled trying to find my identity, you know, what my identity was outside the game of football. Doug met a couple who lost their son to suicide they encouraged him to use his story to help others. They said, man, listen, you, you have a, a true story. You can help a lot of people. You have a platform. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I think, I think, I think AJ didn't die for, for, for any reason. I think he died so that you can help a lot of people. And when I heard that from that couple, um, I felt a huge sense of responsibility. And uh, it wasn't something that I was intimidated by, but something I, that I definitely welcomed. In 2017, Doug started the Dream the Impossible Foundation, bringing awareness to mental health and suicide prevention. For me, uh, the pain of losing my best friend has flipped my life upside down and really turned into my purpose. Today, Doug dedicates his purpose to AJ's memory. That purpose is his passion, helping others and fulfilling God's plan in his life. It's a true blessing, and, and I think it's a true testament to my obedience to God and, and being able to step in the purpose that he has for me, not really with football, but really off the field. 
And I think that's why I've, I've been able to continue this journey so much and continue to speak faith in other people's life is because I listened to those directions that that, that couple gave me when they told me that I, you know, I, I have a duty to help other people. And I've accepted that. I've accepted that role. I've accepted the, you know, being able to tell my story and, and, and being able to, to speak for others who can't speak for themselves. I just want to help others heal. And I want to be able to inspire others through my journey and, and through my passion for life. I want people to look at my life and say that, that God had a hand on my life and that um, through his journey, I know that God can take me through whatever I'm going through. Doug Middleton, it's obvious God has a hand on your life and that you're listening to what he's speaking to your heart. You know, the stats that we hear on depression are incredible. I mean, it is just becoming more and more of an issue in the culture that we live in, a culture that's full of all kinds of blessing and opportunity and yet the hole inside of us. You know, God wants to fill that hole if you're experiencing something like that. Don't try to hide depression. You know, there are answers to this and people want to help. So let your friends, let your family know and seek help from somebody credible who does that and does it well. We have a, a small paper we'd like to share with you. It's called Steps to Overcome Depression. You know, sometimes you need to just read, how do I do that? How do I deal with what it is I'm feeling that doesn't even make sense to me? We'd love to give this to you. It's free. All you have to do is call our toll-free number. It's 1-800-700-7000. God's power in your life can make a difference, and that's not a small statement. Depression is not a small problem. Get help and call for the Overcome Depression piece. We'd love to send it out to you right away. It's free. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Indonesia's highest volcano erupted Sunday, spewing gas clouds into the air. Hundreds of people fled the catastrophe as ash rained down on several villages. Fortunately, no casualties have been reported. Mount Semeru is on Indonesia's most densely populated island. It has erupted several times in the last 200 years. The last major eruption was in December of last year, killing 51 people. Well, CBN Kenya recently held four different Superbook events, including one at an educational center in Kibera, one of Africa's largest slum areas. Many of the children, ranging from kindergarten to secondary school ages, are orphans and at risk. The children learned about obedience from the story of Noah using the Superbook curriculum. They also completed word searches, puzzles, and coloring related to the lesson. Gizmo was on hand, entertaining the crowd with a dance and taking photos together with the kids. You can find out more about what CBN is doing around the world by going to cbn.com slash international. Theo and Marie had a dream. They longed to own a home. The problem, they had no money for a down payment or closing costs. Well, still the couple was able to buy their dream home thanks to divine intervention. Theo and Marie Odendahl are living the American dream. In 2015, Theo's job as a nuclear engineer relocated them from South Africa to the suburbs of Washington, D.C. They longed to buy a home of their own. However, home prices there were twice the national average. I don't have any money for down payment or closing costs, and I don't know where that can come from. That was a very big issue for us, because we don't have any savings. So they rented for several years and put their dream on the back burner. In the meantime, the couple relied on their faith. I literally cried before God for that. It was so overwhelming. It felt as if I will never be able to buy a home. I just believed that because we always had the heart to give, that whenever there comes a time that we need, and like now for the closing cost and the down payment, God will provide. Faith and giving have been an essential part of their relationship since they married 25 years ago. Every cent we own comes from God's hand. So it's actually his money. I can't always give a lot, but I ask God to multiply it to a lot. And I know he does. The Odendals are also faithful 700 Club viewers and CBN partners. I want to see that program every day. It lifts me up. It gives me hope. It makes me happy. 
I became a partner of CBN because Operation Blessing is the most amazing project that helps people with anything, everything, anywhere, anytime. They cover everywhere. No, nowhere is too far for them. They help the people in any way possible. For six years, the Odendals stayed faithful and continued to give. Then in the spring of 2021, Theo learned they qualified for a special program for first-time homebuyers. When the price of their dream house dropped, they had the exact amount of money they needed for the down payment and closing costs. They even had enough left over to cover moving expenses. That was divine, divine, divine intervention. It was a great miracle. God was working behind the scenes for us. He provided for us to the saint. That is so amazing. The Odendals believe that God is faithful to provide when you give. I can tell you by tithing, if you give it with a cheerful heart, if you give it with a good attitude, God honors that. He will multiply that and He will come through for you. So into God's kingdom. It's the best investment you will ever, ever make. He will bring a harvest to your door when you least expect it. When your hands are like this, you can't receive. But when your hands go open, like, you can receive. So never hold tight to what you have. Just open your hands so that you can receive. I hope you get that lesson and get it right deep in your heart. When you give generously, when you give cheerfully, when you help those in need, the Bible says that when you help the poor, you're lending to the Lord and he will repay. The Odendals proved that. They proved it right down to the cent. God provided for their need because they looked after his children. They said, we want to put the kingdom of God first. We want to provide for those in need, we want to lend to the, give to the poor, and, and in that we're lending to God. He will repay us. If you follow these principles, wonderful things can happen. If you want to see people helped around the world, if you want to see the gospel preached around the world, join the 700 Club. How much is it? It's just $20 a month, 65 cents a day. Some of you can join at higher levels. We have 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a, a month. At whatever level, when you, when you join, make sure you ask for Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving. Uh, bank is doing all the processing and all the work for you, and we can send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs. So if you'd like those, Ask for Pledge Express when you call or just go to CBN.com. Uh, when you give monthly on the internet, you automatically sign up for Pledge Express. We also have a new way to give where you text. So text the letters CBN to 71777. Either way, do it now. 1-800-700-7000. Jeff and Deb Waterbury had a miserable marriage. Still, they stuck together. Then one day, Jeff found out that for years, Deb had been cheating on him. And that was the one thing he had asked her never to do. They told me basically in one moment that I wasn't worth anything. And so I, I think that I had to, I believed the lie that I was worthless. At the age of 12, Deb Waterbury's happy childhood was ripped away when two neighborhood boys raped her. I was just so ashamed of who that meant I was, I certainly couldn't tell my parents and I couldn't tell anyone. I just kept it to myself and then tried to re-evaluate and restructure my identity based on this, this new thing. This now must be who I am. I made that vow that I was never going to be that girl that got taken advantage of that day in my friend's, you know, living room. Deb struggled to control her identity and became promiscuous to numb her pain. After college, she married Jeff, who was unaware of her past. I think the greatest expectation I had was uh, once I got married, that was it. I'm never going to get a divorce. Divorce being such a painful thing, I, and I don't know why this was in my heart, but I asked her, she can do anything to me or against me, but please don't ever cheat on me. That, that was the thing that I ask her not to do. Early in the marriage, Jeff poured himself into his career as a military fighter pilot instead of his family. I was not a good husband. I didn't really know how to be a husband. Um, 
I was very unattentive to, to Deb. I was about as distant as a husband could be. Deb looked for acceptance outside of her marriage and had several affairs and one night stands. I was just miserable in my own sin, but I didn't see a way out of it because I was so miserable in my life and I didn't see any way out of anything. For nearly two decades, Jeff and Deb were trapped in a downward spiral. There were probably signs before I even found out that, you know, there's something wrong with our marriage, but I think deep down, I was just gonna try to ignore whatever problems that I thought we had. Jeff and I had a bad marriage. We did not have a good marriage. We both put a lot of bad into it. We had no relationship. We didn't like each other. In 2001, Deb's long-term affair with the man at their church became public. This was the bottom of my despair at this time. And I said, God, I, I don't think I can continue doing this anymore. And I said, you know, either Deb or I, if, if you could just take one of us, that this would be over. I chose sin over and over again, and I was miserable. I remember looking down the ground while he was just sitting across from me, and there was a pool of tears on the floor. Uh, just, I couldn't stop crying. But in Jeff's determination not to divorce, he let Deb stay in the house. In desperation and out of options, they each turned to the God they had both met as children. I kept trying to run away from him, but he never left me and that he never stopped loving me no matter what I did and that his love for me would never change. And I knew it that fast and everything changed that minute. I began to think about it and begin to ponder it. And I, I started to understand that the grace of God toward me and all the, all the sin that I've had in my life and the forgiveness that he gave me in my life, who am I to say I can't forgive someone for what they've done to me? As Jeff and Deb started praying and reading the Bible separately, God began to speak to them both about their marriage. I was getting my eyes off of Jeff, who I was trying to make Jesus all those years and putting it rightfully on the only Jesus that actually it should have been on the whole time. And when we took our eyes off each other and started looking toward Christ, and he began to satisfy me and, 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 and give me joy that I'd never had before. So we were both being transformed together, but separately. She began to serve me in ways she never served me before, and she did it in a way that she had never done before. Uh, and it's little things, and, and I think little things add up. And we were walking through the parking lot of Home Depot and he reached out and grabbed my hand. I think it's because he claimed me in that parking lot. After all the things I'd done to him and after all that we'd ever been through in the middle of that big parking lot in front of all those people, Jeff reached out and claimed me. And I fell so much in love with him right then. And, and it was the first day of the rest of our lives. And you know, only God can do that. Jeff and Deb rebuilt their marriage on the foundation of Christ, and Deb is now a Christian author and speaker. In her book, The Lies That Bind, she helps others find freedom from their past and a new identity in Christ. The couple says they are grateful to God for allowing their story to help others. I wouldn't know God like I know God now. I wouldn't realize the love of Christ like I do now had I not gone through those things. All I can say is the love of Christ, it's in me, and that's the way I love my wife now. My identity is certainly not in the things that I have done, or my identity is certainly not in the things that people have done to me. Who I am is, is the bride of Christ. My identity is, is Jesus. He is, he, everything He is, is in me. And, and that is such a beautiful, freeing thing. Because what He did for Jeff and I is nothing short of magic miraculous. Mm -hmm. I love him in ways I never loved him before. God does so much. He is, he is a miracle working God. Yes, it amen. is, he, there's nothing he can't do. Mm -hmm. If he can raise the dead to life, my word, mm -hmm. he can certainly restore your marriage. You know, Jeff and Deb would have been the, the perfect example of a couple that was just done.
just done, like no answer, no hope, no future, over. God is a redeemer and he, he redeems what's been lost if we'll just let him. You know, I love what Deb said about that parking lot at Home Depot when she said, Jeff claimed me. You know, Jesus claimed you 2,000 years ago. He paid the price for you to belong to him. And when we belong to him, he redeems things that have been lost. He heals things that have been broken. He puts us back together and we're better than we were before. And he can do it in the most broken of relationships. He can do it in the most broken individuals. But we need to come to him and say, Jesus, I'm done. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't control it anymore. You know, can't can't manage being it anymore. You know, the good news is you don't have to be for Jesus. You don't have to perform. You don't have to get good enough. Really, you have to surrender right in the midst of your mess and say, would you change me? Would you, would you by your love, redeem me? Would you help me understand who you are and who I am in you? We get a new beginning with him. I want you to know that's possible for you right in the midst of your circumstance right now, whether it's your marriage that's broken or just your own life because you've made foolish choices. We've all been there and done that, some more seriously than other. There's no report card in heaven. Jesus just wants you. He wants to claim you today, now, in the middle of your mess and change your life. Just say yes. Just say yes to him. If you are struggling in your marriage, I want you to know we have a wonderful brochure for you called Love and Marriage, and we'd love to send it to you absolutely free. By the way, when you call for this, there's a friend on the other end of the line who would absolutely love to pray with you today. So share your heart. You can do it anonymously, but call now, 1-800-700-7000. Gordon? Okay, it's date night at Home Depot. I'm going. <laughs> Here's a word from Romans. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, celebrate Christmas with Inside Edition's Megan Alexander. Plus, there's something wrong with your baby's heart. A three-month-old is medevac to the ICU. A child's on a ventilator struggling for his life. And a call to prayer is sent around the world. We just wanted our baby better. This family's Christmas miracle. It's a blessing to be home. On tomorrow's 700 Club. This holiday season, your friends at Quantum Labs are putting on a Christmas show. Where are you? We're stuck at the airport. What about the show? Maybe you could do it? The show may not go as planned. Hello? I have an emergency. Maybe I can call some friends to Great. help. Let's go. But it'll be wonderful. Quantum Christmas is a celebration of our Savior's birth through song and drama. Join the CBN Animation Club and get Gizmo Go! Quantum Christmas, plus two copies to share with others, all for your gift of only $25. And as a bonus, you'll receive Chris and Joy's Goodnight Prayers book and The Promise of a Child. Each new membership also provides a Superbook gift box to an active duty military family. You can still have a Merry Christmas, even if it's a crazy Christmas, too. Get Quantum Christmas. Act soon and receive a copy of Chris and Joy's Goodnight Prayers book and The Promise of a Child as our way of saying thanks. 